Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melter Production, and today I'm going to show you the wavetable module in M Sound Factory. So I've showed you lots of the other modules, but this one I think is a big one, and it's really cool, so I'm really happy to show this off today. And when I get started, I'll show you here by just clicking here and opening it up. And you'll notice there's actually three different ones. There's wavetable 8, wavetable 40, and wavetable 265. And so you're thinking like, okay, what's the difference between these? And there's not so many differences. The only big difference is the number of tables. So 8 has 8 tables, 40 has 40 tables, and 265, you can use up to 265 tables. Of course you can use less if you want, uh, but the reason you might want to use one versus the other is 8 is going to use less memory, I'm thinking gram, than the 256. So if you're thinking like, I just need you know, more between a few wave tables, use the smaller one. But if you think like, ah, I have one that's pretty detailed, use the larger one. So you see it, you open it up here, I'll pop it out so you can see the whole thing. So you see here the volume, the phase, has some options here for oversampling and anti-aliasing. Um, the rest of the stuff I'll talk about in a second. But these things you've probably seen before, like the pitch, that's the same as all the other modules. And the transform, so just like in the normal oscillator, you can use pulse width modulation, uh, you can do you know, sync features, uh, uh, bending, etc. There's lots of things here, as you can see. Now, the main part of it is down here where it says wavetable. So you see here in the top where it has wave count, you can increase it. Now there's only two, but if I move it up to like 3, 4, 18, etc. So basically how this works is I can click here and you see it says has shows like a saw wave. If I click it, oh, I see the saw wave here and I can just move it just like I did with any of the other oscillators I showed you before. Like, oh, that, that's easy. But there's other things you can do too. If I don't want to use that and I think, oh, I don't want to use this or I don't want to right click it and choose one of these, which maybe you don't. You can go custom here and I can adjust a custom wave. If I click right below it, if I set this to 100% and click here, I think, oh, here's the wave. And it was showing that triangle there, but I can go in here and click this and move it however I like. So I get another type of signal if that's more interesting. And I can actually blend that with one of the original sim uh, signals like here. So like morph that with like a sine wave like that or any of the other waves. So if I change that to like a saw wave, now it'll morph between that strange shape I made and the saw. So that's really cool. And of course, if you're like, I don't want to use those points to do that, you can just right click it and I can set this to drawing mode like this. And now I just do whatever I want like that. So it's easy. And so that's, of course, a really cool feature. But you're probably thinking, like, okay, what if I don't want to do that? Uh, you could do that up a step sequencer, although I don't really understand the point of doing that with this. Uh, you can also click advanced here. And I can load a sample up. So if you have your own single cycle waveform, you can import it here and it'll show up there, which is really cool. Uh, that might be something you might want to do. And of course, you can mess with it here, uh, changing the harmonics, phase, skew, etc. Uh, and then there's one more thing. If you want to do it additively, you can do the same thing here. And it's like, oh, wow, I can adjust the harmonics of anything here. Right now, it's set for 32 harmonics, but you could go all the way up to... 256 harmonics if you want. Uh, you can also randomize them here. Wow, come up with different shapes. And of course there's a generator where you can analyze the sample in here and then do the same things you did with the other one to adjust certain properties. So there's lots of things you can do in there. And of course there's presets here, like um, for example, tons of accordions, different keyboards, orchestral stuff, etc. So if you're thinking, oh, where am I gonna get all these sounds? They already have ton of them, tons of them in there for you. So you can do that, and then you can morph between these different shapes. So if I had, let's say, this shape for the first wave, uh, second wave, let's try this, and then third wave, let's leave it as a saw. Now up here it says wave, you can morph between it by using that. So if I play something here, like C, See so here, it morphs smoothly between those. Let's say you don't want them to morph smoothly though. You can go here where it says interpolate between waves, and just turn this off, and now it's going to step between them like this. So sometimes you might want to do that. So you can choose to have that on or off. Also, you have the unison here where 
you can just turn this on to get more voices. So I can have like a super saw. Okay, well the last one is super saw. The other things are super sign stuff. So of course you can see there's lots you can do with that if you want, but you're probably thinking, okay, that's nice and everything, but like, can you import you know, wavetables from other places? And yes, you can. So let me show you that. I haven't tried it with everything, but I've found most um, wavetables I found online for other brands, they work well. So let me just try importing one here. So you see at the bottom, it says here, import at the bottom right. Click that. Uh, let's try this one. I found it uh, online. Let's choose one like 40. Click it and load it, 147 of them. And so here, I'm gonna set this up to my mod wheel here, CC1, depth. Actually, let me collapse this. I don't need to see all those. But you can see they're all in here. Okay, now let's go through it. Sounds pretty good to me. I don't know what it originally sounded like, but so far I've found it's fairly accurate to what they sound like on other synthesizers. So that's really good. So you, if you're wondering like, hey, where am I supposed to get wavetables? I don't want to edit all of them. You can just import them. So that's something you can do. Uh, something else I could do is, let's say if I want to uh, process my own audio file. So I don't have the wavetable, but I just have a wave file I want to process. So let's say in this case, I'll bring this down here for a second. And now let's analyze an audio file. So I can take any wave file and I can do the same thing and change it into a wavetable. So here I have one, I probably showed you this before. It's just me saying Chandler guitar. So click here, you see the wave here and I get to decide how many different waves I want. I'll try 30, I think that's enough. At first I thought like, oh, if you use more waves, it'll be better, but sometimes it's not. And it's also best if you use something that's one tone, so something that's not changing in pitch. You get lots of uh, uneven wavetables and lots of bumps in your wavetable. So that's just a small tip. But anyways, let's analyze it. Okay. And it changed it here to 30 automatically. There's our 30 wavetables. Let's close it. And here, instead of me using the modulation wheel, because it won't be smooth, I'll use an envelope. Let's move this all the way up and let's do about like one second for the attack. So it'll go from the bottom to the last wave table in about a second. Let's hear what it sounds like. So, sounds pretty good. Now, one thing I'm noticing, it's a little bit lower in volume and that's not good. So one thing I can do is go into here where it says processing and I can turn normal, normalize on. So this will make it a little bit louder. Now, I'm thinking, okay, now from there, what if it sounds a little bit bumpy? There's other things you can do, like zero the fundamental phase, like this. So here it is before. Sounds a little bit smoother, and I can even change all the phases, so we'll zero out all the phases for each wave in the wavetable. And so sometimes it sounds good, sometimes it doesn't. You kind of have to do this by ear. But uh, let's do that. Before. After. In this case, there wasn't such a big difference, but sometimes it really does help to smooth out those bumps. So use that, you know, however you want. And of course, there's many other things you can do with this. I've been working on some wavetables for this, so I've made about like 20 or so, so far myself. Let's see, yeah, in here. But I'll probably try to make a few more. And of course, if you're thinking like, oh, it doesn't have enough wavetables, you can just download. There's tons of them for free on the internet. You can download them and put whatever you want in here. And on top of that, of course, since it's modular, you can do all sorts of interesting things, combine lots of different wavetable oscillators if you want. And I'll show you, actually, one more thing. Let me switch to this to something else. Uh, let's try this, just three. So move this down here to three. And so 
This is fairly simple. It just goes from a triangle to a square to a saw. So that's interesting, but because this is per voice, we can do some really interesting things with it. So let's say if I change this from the envelope to just random. Okay, so now let's hear it. And that's cool, but if I play two different notes, the notes will actually move uh, randomly from each other. So one could be on the square, one could be on the triangle, the other one could be on a saw. So like this. So you can hear how all the different notes are changing completely randomly. And if you don't want to do that, you can like set it by, um, instead of just like random one here and uh, random for each target, I could do something completely different, like uh, use it with a mod wheel and make each key have a slightly different value, for example. And there's all sorts of different things you can do with these per voice effects. So I think that's one of the really cool things about this that maybe you don't see in other synthesizers. But if you like this, Give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those below. Subscribe if you haven't done that. And until next time, see you.